The first thing we're going to talk about is the fact that not only Evan Turner won the multi-GP, but the fact he did it using HD0. So if I jump over to the desktop a minute, if you go onto the HD0 Facebook page, you'll see a post, it's official. He's won the multi-GP flying HD0. Now I watched quite a bit of this yesterday and I'm gonna show you guys some footage from it in a minute and explain just what my thoughts are on this. Now, I'll be clear up front. I haven't really been that bothered around FPV drone racing personally. However, having spent a good few hours watching it last night, it was hard not to get involved in it and not get dragged in. Now, if we jump over to the footage, and I'm going to show you two bits of footage. We're going to first of all just take a look at one of the races where there are two HD0 systems showing, and then we'll take a look at the last race as well where he actually won. And it is incredible the speeds some of these guys fly at. It really is. So what we've got here is the first actual race, and this is... I'm just going to mute it a second. Now, what you've got here is... This system here, Heads Up FPV and Nautical RHD0. Now, I do want to explain something first of all before we get in any further. This one has the menu on the screen permanently. The pilot isn't seeing that. He is seeing it fine. This is just a firmware quirk as a result of them using multiple different firmware versions and um ground station receivers and this menu is up on the receiver that's pushing out to the video feed but he isn't on the pilot's cam but it's just one of those things they need to resolve moving forward it's not really a fault it's just that the menu was put up and because of the mismatch in firmware it's ended up on the screen so these two left we've got heads of fpv evan turner and we've got nautical and then you've got the other two guys who are analog now i'm not sure how well this will show over the stream but we'll go for it anyway and what was very clear to me was just how much better HD0 looked from how it handled the image, but how it behaved overall. Now, these two over this side are analog FPV, and it is worth mentioning that they may not quite look this bad in the, the pilot's goggles because these units that you're using to receive doesn't have all of the extra tech like you get in um, rapid fire and all of those modules. It doesn't have the way it actually is able to sort the sync issues out and everything else. However, it is clear to me that HD0, having watched it live for a few hours, just looked so much better. It really, really did. And it wasn't just the image quality. It was the way it handled in the dark conditions. And it was the way it behaved overall. And as you can see here, he is running first at the moment. And I do believe he wins this race, actually. It is looking quite compressed here on the screen I'm looking at here. But if you're interested in this, I will put links into it. Oh, no, we need to get, we need to get the quality up on that, don't we? Let's just go back a little bit. That was in 320p then that was. Let's just do that again. So hopefully that'll look a little bit better. But yeah, it really does look substantially better. It really does. And from a spectator point of view, let alone pilot, it was night and day. It really was. And all the comments of the races, you had people saying just, wow, look how good HD0. Heads up caught the uh, gate there, unfortunately. But, you know, you just, you know, you've got just the image is just better. It's just, it's not just about clarity. It's, it's how it looked overall in the white balance, how it behaved in the light and dark conditions and just everything around it. Now, as you can see here, uh, heads up, crashed out on that one, but uh, Noikol continued. And we'll just wait for this one to get to the end. And look, if you're interested in this, it is well worth checking out. And it is really good to see digital move forward like this. Now, if I hop over to the second one, because I've queued up two, and let me just make sure this one is in the right mode as well. No, it isn't. It was in 720p. They had a delay on this race starting because I think there was a problem. Here we go. This was the final race. And again, both HD0 systems at the top, analog at the bottom. Now, 
Noichl crashed out very, very quickly, but heads up. And just look at the difference for spectators. It's huge. He is absolutely massive. And even if analog looks better than this, which it will, obviously, in the goggles, it has to be a benefit with the image quality on this digital system and HD Zero. It really, um, it really must be. Now, it is interesting to see that there has been a lot of sort of reluctance for people to move over to digital um, in FPV racing, but I think you're going to see a lot more of it. And, and the reality is HD0 is the system for that. There's no question about it. And it, it, it's just night and day, the difference in image quality, especially spectators. And I think as someone mentioned in the chat, um, it's not just about the pilot. It's about how people are able to view it as well. And the more people that watch it, the better. And there we go. And that was the uh, the end of that race. And as I said, I spent two and a half hours, I think. No, it was more than two and a half hours. It was a good two hours, two and a bit hours watching it live on the Discord server on HD Zero. And a massive shout out to Ryan because Ryan was streaming it on the Discord server for HD Zero. And it was fantastic because there was a group of us there talking, having a chat while the racing was happening. And I sincerely hope they do that again because it was really a nice little community event where you had the guys off the Discord server on there talking. We just logged in, watched it, watched the racing, chatted about stuff in between. They gave me some abuse, quite rightly so. And yeah, it was fantastic. And it's really good to see this community building around HD Zero again. Now, alongside this, this win, because this is major and it's massive and it's going to propel this system further and further forward. And I will answer some of the questions I've seen on it in a minute, guys. Um, we've just had the release of the new board. Now, if you haven't seen this, this is a new version of the race transmitter. So we had the HD Zero race, or which was the TX5R.1 originally, which is this one here. And that's the one that I actually have over there. But there was a lot of complaints on this one, um, getting it into frames. It wasn't a great form factor. So they've now come up with the HD Zero race version 2, which is a square transmitter rather than this rectangle shape but with the same specification smart audio 200 milliwatts and the the better build than we've had on say the whoop board now if we just take a bit of a look at it close up it is what we've expected to see before it is a better board than the whoop board like if i jump back to this one you might be asking well why do we have the whoop and why do we have the race the main difference between these two is that this board, the Whoop, doesn't have smart audio. It doesn't have the option to latch down the um, MIPI connection or the UFL, and it doesn't have vibration-isolated uh, holes either for the mounting, whereas the main VTX does. And this one is a higher quality board overall. Now, I'm trying to get one of these in as soon as I can. There are some things I do have some concerns about on this board. If you notice the size, it does overhang quite a bit on the mounting pattern and there are components or components i should say on the outside of that as well so for instance you've got the main power amplifier located here i think that is a backup there i can't quite remember i did have a look into it we do have a tvs diode which is really nice to see up here which should stop it uh, shorting itself out and that should protect it from voltage spikes but you do have some components on these corners especially, and this is going to overhang because that's a 20 by 20 mounting pattern. Just check, it is 20 by 20. Yes, it is 20 by 20 mounting pattern. So you are going to have it overhang. The comments that have been made on it is that it does overhang, um, but it's no more than most ESCs. That's the comments I've had on it. Now, it's really interesting to see this come out as well, and I'm going to get one as soon as it becomes available. Now, in all of this, we have seen what was known as Sharkbite, which is now HD0, begin to really take off. And that has really been since HD0 themselves have begun to push things. Fat Shark, for the most part, 
are completely silent in this now. Yes, they released the Scout HDs, which I've got over there, but even that internally appears to have been designed by HD0. But HD0 now are taking the plunge. They're pushing forward. They are moving the system forward, producing more and more things. Now, not far around the corner, as I've already said, uh, seen someone mention, is going to be the one watt transmitter now they are not actually labeling these one watt or 200 watts and things like that the naming scheme has been changed you can see that they've relabeled the names of their transmitters and the new one is going to be the vtx i think it's l or vtx l max they're not going to label it one watt it is planned to have up to one watt power output, but it's not necessarily going to be called HD0 one watt transmitter. Now, my understanding is the reason they're doing this is the output and performance of this new transmitter will be heavily dependent on the cooling of it. And depending on your use case, depending on your setup, may get varying results. I haven't tried it. I haven't seen it in person. I haven't had really any information to comment other than that, but there is a hard fact that it is coming. We know it's going to happen in the near future. It will be up to one watt of output. What we don't fully know yet is how it handles that output with temperature. Is it going to be like DJI where it goes from, you know, full output down to low power mode? Or does it vary the output depending on temperature? The latter would be very, very good and handy. If I'm honest, I would love to see that. That would be really good. And depending then on your setup would depend then on what the actual output power is. But there is no question we are going to see this transmitter push things forward again, as well as have that with the HD0 camera that will be available in the next couple of weeks too. Again, the initial batches went out and mine is here. This is the final retail one. So if I jump to the overhead, you guys can see it here. Here is the final retail copy. I haven't tried it yet. It's going to be going in the quad later this week. And I am waiting for that new board to come as well to be able to talk about it. But what we're now getting is HD0 with up to one watt of output with this new camera. And it is really, really beginning to bring it to DJI. Now, before I answer some questions on this, I'm going to say one last thing on, on this whole thing around HD0. And that is... We have two digital systems right now. There is talk of a third coming, but we have two. We have one which is established and very well known for delivering a certain level of performance. And we've had HD0, which has started very slowly. It, it really didn't show itself off in the best light in the early days due to the cameras, but it really is beginning to hit its stride, especially now what we're seeing things like it re winning races, winning the multi-GP, and we're going to get this one watt transmitter and these new cameras. So there is a lot going for it. And the one thing I will say is this. We have a system where there is a community building around it, where there is a manufacturer who is listening to that community and is willing to implement features based off that feedback. You guys know, those of you who watch me know, we have had to shout and scream to get some stuff fixed on the DJI system. Whilst the DJI system, without doubt, offers outstanding range very good image quality. The gap is really narrowing now, and it really, really is getting so tight that decision is not as simple anymore as latency versus range. We're going to have to see how the one watt performs, and obviously we're going to have to see how the penetration is and other things like that. However, it is really now down to latency versus range, and it's going to come down to what system gives you the overall best results. And look, it's hard not to recommend a system where you've got a manufacturer who's answering questions, adding features, and taking feedback. The biggest complaint myself and many have against DJI is that they are simply not doing that. And whilst there's some good stuff coming, we've had new cameras, there's this new board this Runcam split HD coming HD0 
appears to be now where the action is at and where it's pushing forward. And I'm really excited to see where it goes moving forward.